Kippy Herod. I'm your instructor for Accounting 1303 here at Trinity Valley Community College in Athens, Texas. I appreciate you coming by today. This should be viewable inside your blackboard shell for our course that you're currently taking with me. Today, what we'd like to do would be to discuss Chapter 2. These are all about your Week 2 assignments for this semester. And Chapter 2 in its entirety is basically how to analyze a transaction in accounting. Uh, and it also goes into detail about the accounting equation. Now, let's turn over here first in your textbook, if you would with me, please. Chapters 1 through 6 of your textbook is organized around a business called Jessica Jane's Campus Delivery Service. Now, this particular company is a girl, a young girl, who has started a business. It's a service business, and it is based on the delivery of packages to different individuals over the campus. We will continue to speak about Jessie Jane as we, go, as we go along. Three major accounting elements that you will always find in a business. This is regardless of what business that you are in, whether you're a plumber, you're in electronics, you are an attorney, you are a medical doctor, you're a paralegal. It doesn't matter what type of business that you are in, you will have some type of accounting function that you will need to uh, be knowledgeable about. Everything is based on the general, generally accepted accounting principles, so those first three accounting elements are really, really important. First one is called assets. Now, when you think about a person's assets, that's basically the things that they own, O-W-N. Things that you might own in a business, let's say, for example, in Jessica Jane's campus delivery service, maybe she might own a computer, maybe she may own uh, maybe a, a scooter or a bicycle to deliver her services or her packages with, possibly she may own a van, maybe she owns some office supplies, Something that is going to be um, providing her future business uh, a benefit in the business and as well as something that she can kind of hang on to. It's something that she owns. She physically can have it. Of course, we can't forget cash because let's hope that all businesses has a little bit of money in the bank. So cash or your checking account is definitely considered as one of your major assets. So on our sheet here today, I'm just going to put in parentheses that one of our, our best ways of describing an asset or things that we own. Liabilities. That is your second accounting element. So let's take a look at liabilities. When you think about your liabilities as a person, that would be the things that would be taking away from you, maybe the things that would be a mark against you, so to speak. Well, if we're using the word own, O-W-N, to describe assets, the best way to describe liabilities would be the word O-W-E. That's going to be things that we owe someone else. Maybe in Jesse Jane's example, maybe Jesse Jane goes out and purchases a scooter so that she can easily deliver these packages. Well, she can't pay for the whole thing, so she owes the company for a portion of that scooter, and she's maybe making payments on it as she goes. However that works, that is definitely going to be an accounting element and something that she has to keep track of in her books. The third major accounting element we will refer to as owner's equity. Owner's equity is going to be the net worth or the capital of that business. In other words, whatever is left over is what is going to be owned by the business or the business owner. Anything personal in nature is never considered as this. In other words, Jesse Jane might have some extra money over here on the side in a savings account that Grandma gave her when she was young, but that's not considered a part of her business. You never mix business and personal things together. That would get you in deep, deep trouble, so you don't want to do that. Well, how do these three things relate? Well, if I were in my algebra class, I could probably make this into a type of equation, and that's exactly what we will do here today. With an equal sign between the assets and the liabilities, and a plus sign here. When I really examine this, let's say, for example, what if, just what if, Jesse Jane has, oh, maybe $10,000 in the bank. She owes no one. This would be 10000 equals zero plus, and how much does that mean that she would have left? Well, if she owns 10000 she owes nothing, then that amount that it would be her net worth would be $10,000. That's what 
If she were to sell out the business today, what would be left? These two people are the ones that have the rights to the assets. Let's say, for example, that Jesse Jane has decided to go out of business. She has $10,000 in assets. She owes $2,000. How much would be left? If she were to go out of business, she would take her $10,000, sell it in a perfect world, pay her $2,000 in liabilities, and how much would be left? $8,000. So does 10 equal 2 plus 8? You see how it relates to each other? If at this point, I'm going to stop for just a few minutes, I'm going to place this particular thing up over our document camera. This is your weekly uh, assignment sheet, your check-off sheet, your to-do list, if you would, for week two assignments. And as I'm looking here at the third step, it said analyzing transactions, the accounting equation, and it starts here with accounting elements. This is exactly what we've just finished doing. Open your textbook. You go through, read about these accounting equations, or the accounting elements, and then you'll complete exercise 2-1 in your working papers. You should have a book that looks like this, working papers, and it'll say chapters 1 through 15 on the book. And inside this book are all of your little pages that you'll be able to work. Now, I've already pulled a couple of these, and by the way, you can leave them in a bound form, or you can tear them out punch holes in them, stick them in a loose leaf binder. Any of those are right with you, however you want to do it. Just don't throw any of them away because at any point during the semester, whether you are in a face-to-face -face class or in an online class, I can ask to see your working papers and you will need to produce them. So don't lose any of these pages, okay? I've torn out this first exercise that is assigned to you, which is exercise 2-1-A. And we're just going to take a quick peek at it first. As I'm looking here, this is the page from your working papers that uh, is the first assignment there on your weekly to-do list. Basically, you'll just take a look here, the things that are listed under the item column, and the things that are listed here under the particular account, what we would classify this to be, and then we would say, is this an asset? Would this be a liability, or is this what's left from the owner? Money in the bank. Of course, that's going to be considered as cash. Do you think that's going to be an asset, a liability, or an owner's equity? If you answered asset, then you were correct because cash is something that you own. It's not anything that you owe someone else. So you would put, just basically put an A in this particular column here. Now, there is one that I'd like to go over, and that's the last two, or the next to the last one where it says money withdrawn by the owner. And it is listed as a drawing account. This doesn't mean draw like in your painting class. Instead, this means draw out, like I am taking this money out. Well, in the case of Jessica Jane, if Jesse were to say, you know, I've made this money and I think I really need to take $50 out and go to the movies and out to eat and take some friends out to enjoy the evening, she's going to remove that $50 out of the business. When she does that, then that is a withdrawal or it is a drawing from business to personal. She would never write those type of expenses, personal expenses in nature, from her business account. She must remove the money from the business, place it into the personal, and um, move on from there. So that would be affecting her owner's equity. So this last, next to the last one, money withdrawn by the owner, will definitely be... Um, an owner's equity classification.